the most important thing to remember about an economy coming to an end is that wealth never disappears. It merely shifts location. The big question is, how well will you be positioned and where will your wealth be held? Will you make the proper moves before this shift occurs? And will you be in the proper position to take advantage of the opportunities as they happen? Today's video will not only show you how this entire system as we know it will end, but it will show you how you can be on the proper side when it does. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver company. And I, you know, the strategy that I developed that everybody at ITM, including me, is executing is based on these historical repeatable patterns. And we're in the middle of one right now. Let me take you back for a moment to August 15th of 1971, when then President Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. And he says that he has directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold. Further, the public, he did not want the public to get nervous. And believe me, we were all distracted with the Vietnam War, the oil embargo, women's lib, civil rights, and lots of other protests that were going on during this time. Now, what is this action, which is very technical, not so technical. They took away what created and, and supported fiscal responsibility, but it's very technical. What does it mean for you? Let me lay to rest the bugaboo of what is called devaluation. If you want to buy a foreign car or take a trip abroad, market conditions, notice market conditions, not what I'm doing, market conditions may cause your dollar to buy slightly less. Well, we have officially way less than four cents left out of the original purchasing power of the dollar. That's, that is not slightly less. But if you are among the overwhelming majority of Americans who buy American made products in America, your dollar will be worth just as much tomorrow as it is today. Ah, uh, okay. You know, hindsight is 2020. Is that true? Not even marginally so. Plus they started globalization shortly after that because I remember all the talk of it when I became a stockbroker in the mid 80s. The effect of this action, in other words, will be to stabilize the dollar. Now, I hope I didn't make too many comments in there because I want you to listen to this. The persistent undershoot of inflation from our 2% longer run objective is cause for concern. Many find it counterintuitive that the Fed would want to push inflation up. After all, low and stable inflation is essential for a well-functioning economy. We'll talk about that. And we are certainly mindful that higher prices for essential items, such as food, gasoline, and shelter, add to the burdens faced by many families, especially those struggling with less jobs and incomes. However, inflation that is persistently too low can pose serious risk of the economy. Inflation that runs below its desired level can lead to an unwelcome fall in longer term inflation expectations, which in turn can pull actual inflation even lower resulting in an adverse cycle of ever lower inflation and inflation expectations. This dynamic is a problem because expected inflation feeds directly into the general level of interest rates, 
While anchored inflation expectations are critical for giving the Fed the latitude to support employment when necessary without destabilizing inflation. But if inflation expectations fall below our 2% objective, interest rates would decline in tandem. In turn, we would have less scope to cut interest rates to boost employment during an economic downturn, further diminishing our capacity to stabilize the economy through cutting interest rates. We have seen this adverse dynamic play out in other major economies around the world. Japan. And learned that once it sets in, it can be very difficult to overcome. So let's just kind of dissect that gobbledygook a little bit because he's trying to tell you inflation is a very good thing, except that the average wage never, ever, ever keeps pace with inflation. And so in this most current stimulus that they did, it was those that make less than $75,000 a year. Whereas in 1971, the average wage was something like 9,500 and a family of four could live on that. A family of four can't even live on $75,000 a year. But look at that wealth and income inequality gap which is now far greater than it was even in 1929 or 28 before that stock market crash. And we do know all the studies have pointed to the fact that you have the 0.001% of the population that owns the lion's share of the wealth. And you may have also heard many times that this is the biggest wealth transfer in history because it is designed to take the last little bit of wealth and move it over to that 1% or actually less than 1% of the population. And unfortunately, you and I are not in that category unless, of course, we hold gold because that is what creates the opportunities. So aside from all of the gobbledygook telling you, yeah, don't worry, the effect of this action, in other words, will be to stabilize the dollar, which it didn't. <laughs> the dollar then began, began a long-term slide. But Danielle DiMartino Booth, who was part of the Dallas Fed, Powell mentioned financial stability in his remarks today. They have made it official. The stock market is their official goal. And other than yesterday and today, where we're having seeing a level of correction, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Stocks hit highs and bonds tumble after the Powell pivot, after this brand new thing where they are going to target an average of 2%, which means that they are going to do everything in their power because you got to remember there is only one way, only one way to fight deflation and that is with inflation. Stock markets imploding is deflationary. People spend less money and we know they've been having trouble getting people to spend money. That's why I think we're going to see UBI, universal basic income. But if the stock market keeps going up, because remember too, how many retirees are dependent upon the returns of the stock market? We're between a rock and a hard place. They have no other alternative. And let me just remind you what deflation and inflation and all of that is. If you've got some buttons, and every day I go into your house and I take one button at the end of 30 years, I'm going to have a lot of your buttons, but you're probably not going to notice it that much. If, however, I go in and I take 99% of the buttons in your house in one night, you're going to notice it. And that's the difference between the slow form of inflation that we've been experiencing, hence that 2% target. Because if prices go up 2% a year, even though your income doesn't keep pace with it, then at the end of 10 years, wow, they have 
of your purchasing power and you didn't even complain or notice it. I was around in the 70s. We were yelling about inflation. Now it's a very good thing. But the stock market loves it because Powell is telling him, telling everybody, that they are going to keep interest rates anchored at zero like they have a choice. And they're going to do QE. And by the way, when I came in here, before I came in here, I saw that the Dow was down like 760 points. And what happened? One of the Fed presidents came out. I think it was Clarita, but you can't hold my, you don't hold me to that. It was one of them. And came out and said and indicated that there was going to be more QE coming soon. Soon. Don't worry about it. We do not want this severely overvalued, ridiculously overvalued, the most expensive stock market in history. We do not want that to implode. We're going to pump it up and pump it up and pump it up. But what happens when they do that is that loss of value, purchasing power value, real value. So we're going to look at what happened with gold on that day as well. But you guys know, this is my very favorite question. How many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? Let me show you the truth. Historic policy change. Yeah, it was a monetary regime chip. Quietly announced, just like Nixon did in 71. People didn't know that anything had changed. It all seemed really pretty normal. Dollars, still the dollars. Whether it was a gold back or a debt back, still the dollar. Everything had changed and everything has changed. Make no mistake about it. Now 2% is that average inflation target. This is what they call stable prices. This is the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. So this is an indica indication of inflation. But you know, they jury rig all of those numbers as well. So you know it's a lot worse than this. And every single time a central banker tells you we want more inflation, what they're really telling you is that the dollar, the euro, the yen, wherever you are in this planet, they're telling you that that fiat currency is overvalued and they're going to be taking it down. And they're going to be taking it down in a very big way. And, you know, you might recall, because we've talked about this, that the level of quantitative easing in the beginning back in March, I mean, that was faster and how many times more than all the QE that they did in 2008. It was extreme. They front-loaded it, thinking or experimenting with the fact that, well, that might just be do the trick. But it's not doing the trick. The real economy is really, really struggling. Though you have some that are doing quite well in the economy. But the broad economy, not doing so well. And of course, how did spot gold that contract of gold where you now have traders standing for delivery instead of just rolling those contracts over hmm wow well gold falls after fed signals low rates for longer but gold protects you during deflation and inflation doesn't really matter and we've completed I'm going to grab my little thing here, the laser pointer. We've completed this cup formation. So all that's really technically happening right now is a consolidation. Because nothing goes straight up, nothing goes straight down. you got to have some bouncing along the way. And that's all that's happening with gold. I'm buying more. And ever I can get my hands on it. Because what do I know? A hundred bazillion percent physical gold and physical silver 
severely undervalued. And you know that because the central banks are also telling you that the currency, the fiat currency is severely overvalued. That's why they got to have more inflation and hey, they're going to overshoot it. They're getting ready to lose control. And eventually everybody's going to know that they've lost control. But when it's first happening, they're going to, oh no, this is planned because we're going for an average of 2%. And it justifies more quantitative easy, more money for free to pump up these markets. Because I didn't really do this, but there, no, we haven't created any bubbles. No, the stock market, oh my God, Meester, the stock market is, at, this is a Fed president. The stock market's acting perfectly rationally. And this was a few days ago before it was in a correction mode. Yeah, not rationally at all. But the dollar is telling another story, okay? Now, all this really is, is the continuation of a long-term trend and loss of value. And this is the dollar index. So it's actually just fiat against fiat. So when you hear them say the strong dollar or the strong pound or the strong whatever, it's really fiat money against fiat money but make no mistake whatsoever. I don't care what fiat money it is. It's losing its purchasing power value by design and with intention. Now, the dollar retreated in a key portion of the U.S. government bond market flashed inflation warnings on Friday. Yes, the central banks are telling you we're going to do whatever it takes to create that inflation. I hope you're ready. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Get it done if you haven't. Get it done. This new policy framework could erode the appeal of U.S. assets. Because there are people out there that understand nominal confusion. So the stock market keeps going up, but they know that you can only convert it into dollars, which keeps losing value, not against other currencies. I mean, it is, but that's not really what's relevant. It's if all you can do is convert these U.S. assets, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, into dollars, and the dollars lost all of its value, trillion times zero is zero. Make no mistake. This tweak, just a little tweak, no big deal, just a little tweak, is designed to allow more leeway. I love what they say net to support the economy. How about to support the stock market? Dear Fed, hey there, it's me, the stock market. I know it's weird to write you like this, but I felt I needed to drop a quick thank you note for everything you've done for me this year. I mean, your big old balance sheet is almost three trillion larger since early March. You're backing up the truck and loading it with treasuries and corporate bonds and bond ETFs, all to keep the competition to stocks from fixed income yields as limited as Jim Cramer's understanding of me. It's been a dream come true, honestly. I mean, fess up. Have you been reading my diary? That was in Bloomberg. Um, I'll give you the link. I, I know I have it. But, you know, a thank you to the stock market. Yeah, absolutely. But in the meantime, Wall Street inflation expectations, that they, that's what they care about. The expectations. Because if you think that things are going to get more expensive, you are likely to buy it today rather than wait until it gets more expensive. And hey, we are a consumer-driven economy. The whole world is basically consumer-driven anymore. So we need consumers to consume. And if you have the money, they want you to spend it now. They don't want you to save it. 
They don't want you to save it at all. And here's the 10 year treasury yield, deeply depressed. You think? The rate is now, but here's the key in this one. The rate is now essentially where it started 2020, but that masks a larger shift. That shift indicates market expectations for returns after inflation have weakened markedly. So that goes back to could erode the appeal of U.S. assets. Because even though the average person doesn't understand inflation, mm, the 1% do. And that's why we're seeing insiders getting out of these markets in droves. What happened today? Is this the start of the loss of control for the central bank? That's why they had to come out and say, don't worry, we've got more money coming. Don't worry, be happy. Because if the stock market implodes, you're going to notice it if it implodes in a rather big way. This is real quarterly GDP, the August numbers. And they're expecting through the second quarter a GDP loss of 31.7%. Do you know what the loss of GDP? Now, GDP is all the money that flows through the U.S. economy, all of it. Do you know what the GDP loss was between 1929 and 1933 during the Great Depression? 30%. That means that we're in a depression, and it's worse than the depression in 33, but that was the kickoff. This is the end of the grand experiment. And they're gonna move us into another experiment. That's why you gotta have gold and physical gold and silver in your possession. Because you're gonna need something. We can't stop what's happening, but we can get into the best position to take advantage of it and to protect our wealth and to protect our purchasing power. That's the whole point of physical gold, physical silver out of this system. Because going back now, this particular graph, bar graph goes back to 1945. And this was the worst hit on GDP then. And again, between 29, 1929 and 1933, it's worse today. And forgive me for being repetitive because, boy, if I can get you to understand this, that's everything. There is only one way to fight deflation, and that's with inflation. But this is hyper deflation. A stock market implosion is hyper deflation. That's what the battle is. That's what the battle is. It's not just regular deflation. It's hyper deflation. What's the difference? What's the difference between deflation or inflation and hyper deflation or inflation? It's the speed at which it happened. So back in the depression in 1929 to 1933, that took four years. This took two quarters. This took a half a year. The speed. And this is a big experiment that has never historically been done before. And what they did since 2008 didn't work. We were already headed for this. This pandemic, oh, pandemic, what great timing. And now what are they doing? They're pointing all of the fingers. Because there is only one way, only one. You don't have choices. Look, they've been trying. Only one way to fight hyperdeflation, and that is with hyperinflation. And let me show you what happens to gold during these resets when all confidence is lost in the currency and they got to lop off zeros. 
you watch. I mean, I can't guarantee this, but history does repeat itself. Once they put in place UBI, and more and more states are experimenting with it. We, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I can't guarantee this. And hey, I, I could be wrong, but I'm really confident that we're going to have universal basic income in some form before the end of this year, so people will go out and spend. That is what, and we're going to be paying attention to that and the monetary velocity, and that is what's going to cause this. This is just a few how gold behaves during a reset. When do you want to buy it? How about when you can? How about when it's undervalued? There's silver too. Physical, in your possession for a properly diversified portfolio. And then you want to be diversified inside of your metal. So gold, silver, asset protection, growth. You can experiment, you get to. You've got to do whatever you're comfortable with regardless of what anybody says, even me. I'm not gonna be insulted. But you have to make a choice on how you want to make this last stand because that's where we are. This is the last stand. And it's not something that's happening in the future. It's something that we are already walking through. What is going to put you in the best possible position? The strategy that I created for myself based on all these repeatable patterns. They're there. It makes it pretty easy. You just have to accept that you see them and get into position. Because this is what we know. You know, I, I can't say anything about digital currencies or cryptocurrencies that have only been around since 2009. I'm thinking they haven't really been tested yet. And even though I know that's the direction they're pushing us in and that's what's gonna happen, I don't know which ones are gonna be viable and which ones are just gonna be another Wall Street product to play with. And neither do you. But what I do know is if I've got real money that has been proven to last for thousands of years, the other thing that has been proven is that you can always, always, 100% of the time, convert your physical gold and physical silver into any currency. But you cannot always convert worthless fiat currencies because what? That's government-backed currency. It's a government-based currency. And as we've seen most recently, well, I don't know that this is most recent, but in India in 2016 where they demonetized 85% of the currency that was out there, the government giveth, the government can taketh away, but not gold. In fact, these coins that they just found, 2000 on, on uh, well, this report is from August 28th. They, these coins were created back in the Byzantine Emperor Theopolis, who ruled from 1829 to 1840, or what am I saying? I'm sorry, 829 to 842 AD. And we are in 2020, fast approaching 2021. And there's still money because they're gold. Gold is indestructible. Indestructible. They've been sitting in the ground for all these years. And some of them are like new. The condition's phenomenal. And some of them have been cut because they needed smaller denominations. It's really an interesting article. And this is the piece particularly that I really wanted you to see. Because whether it was through war or trade, money kept flowing. Gold 
and silver are money that lasts through wars, through currency resets, through hyperinflation, through financial crisis. It's indestructible. That's what I want to move into this next currency with. Because I'll just convert it as I need it and see where is this dust going to settle. Where is it going to settle? We'll find out, won't we? But gold is real money that central banks cannot destroy. They can manipulate the price. That's easy and cheap. They're doing it in the, tan in the intangible markets, these contracts. But it's real value regardless of what they make it look like, is so much higher in nominal terms, in terms of dollars or euros or yen or wherever you're watching from. So much higher. Because the currencies themselves are worth so much less. You really need to be ready. Please be ready. It's happening. It's happening. And he's announcing this. Fed Chair Powell, this was a very big deal. This was a very big deal. This is a game changer. They're setting up to justify the hyperinflation. But you can't. You can't. Because it destroys people. We have something like 50% of the U.S. population that is food insecure. Food becomes the single biggest issue during these transitions. Remember what happened at the grocery store in March and April? No kidding. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter Please, 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 please get it done. Get it done. We are running out of time. <sighs> okay. So yesterday, I had a very interesting discussion with Victoria over at IGTV. A little 10-minute blurb. And do we have that link yet, Meg? Not yet. Not yet, but as soon as we get that link, Megan will uh, post it mm -hmm. and she'll let you know. And next week, I'm going to be on with Patrick Vieira over at Silver Bullion TV. And I had a great time with him last time. So, and a lot has happened since then. And he always asks the best questions. So I know this is going to be a great interview and we'll keep you posted on that. If you have any questions about this or anything else, just make sure you send them in to questions at itmtrading.com and also make sure that you visit our blog. That's where you're going to find all of the images, a little blog that I write that I wrote on this uh, for today and I do that every week as well, as well as all of the uh, links to all of this different material, uh, including you can listen to Pal's entire speech I just gave you a little snippet, but if you want to listen to the whole thing, rock and roll, hoochie coo. Keep in mind, that it is absolutely the time to cover your assets. And you do that with the Wealth Shield, which has four overarching pieces to it. And it's, it's pretty easy to understand. It's broken down. Call us at 888-696-4653. You do not want to be walking through this without a plan. Because how many times can you be lied to when you don't know the truth? And this plan is based on repeatable patterns. Because I can't guarantee tomorrow, but goodness gracious, if we're doing the same thing the same way, yeah, I'm thinking we're going to get the same results. And wealth never disappears. It just shifts location. How about if it shifts your way for a change? What a concept. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.